David in North Dakota. David. Hi, David. Hello. Hi. Hi. What How would are you, you guys? Really good. Really well. Yeah, the caffeine is just now oh. starting to kick in. So <laughs> better, oh, okay. better by the second. What did you want to talk about today? I just, I, um, well, I wanted to uh, ask you guys because I, um, I, I have some conversations with, with atheists on, on comment sections, which I know isn't the best place to obviously have these kinds of conversations. But <laughs> um, I try and keep it respectful even there if I can, obviously. But um, kind of always reciprocated. But the question that I try and ask people um, that I, I don't feel like I've gotten a, at least a satisfactory answer is, um, and this is for you guys, but uh, I know you guys are atheists and I know that you guys say you're, you know, you're open to hearing a different um, perspective, something that maybe could convince you otherwise of your belief. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what do you guys think, like uh, what you guys know about yourselves? What do you guys think would be something that would convince you? Because what, what I kind of see is that I asked, I asked atheists to set a goalpost for what might, consi- what might convince them. Some of them just don't know, and I accept that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, but what I tend to see is that when you try and press them on a specific thing that would convince them, that's within reason, they tend to shy away from that or they start moving the goalpost. And so it's kind of a twofold question. What do you think would convince you? And also, uh, do you, how do you know that you even want to be convinced in the first place? How do you know that you want to be convinced? So, right. Like, for example, um, well, I, you know, they, they, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, was, I was going to jump in and, and say, if we say that the goal is to know as many true things and as few false things as possible, then we can go from there, right? And it doesn't matter where it takes you so long as that goal is to know as many true things and as few false things as possible. So let's okay, start, so, let's, let's start so, there. So, David. Okay. Um, when you say convinced, there are different ways people say convinced. And I've talked to a lot of Christians and a lot of just overall theists who said, well, what would it take to convince you? And sure. because they're different people, they have different definitions of convince. And so sometimes people will say, well, how can I convince you with absolute certainty, 100% that God <laughs> exists? And my response right. there is, I can't tell you with 100% certainty that I exist. So... We need to change that. Otherwise, that is a that's something that's just not going to work. So, well, why why aren't you well? Why aren't you convinced that you exist? I mean, I I'm convinced that you exist. Well, that's I mean, awesome. I never met you, and <laughs> but um, <laughs> so so what I take, and, and when I say convinced, I mean I I cannot tell you with absolute certainty one hundred percent that I exist. Um, because I don't have that 100% certainty in anything. And the reason I don't have 100% certainty in anything is because when I do, I stop investigating. I go, I have the answer. I'm stopping investigating. So everything is tentative. You know, what what you have is this sliding scale. And on this scale is, you know, everything that you understand and know about the world that that is informing your opinions on things and, and, and what you accept is true. And so as things, as more evidence stacks up, you kind of go, okay, this is more and more likely to be true. And so I can give you an example, right? right? Um, When you say God, you're talking about something that has a whole bunch of different characteristics and different things that people said it did. Sure. But if we took it a piece at a time, I think we could get there. So let's start with intercessory prayer, right? So if you were to show with, with it very significantly, you know, if you pray... Um, for healing medically or if you pray for that raise uh, at work and you were to test for it and show that, hey, you know what? Uh, 80% of the time when you pray, it happens against the placebo, which is much lower, right? You can actually test for it and go, okay, does intercessory prayer work? Does it matter if maybe I'm praying to one God or another? Okay, so let's say for example, that if you pray to the Abrahamic God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the, you know, in, in a certain Christian denomination, all of a sudden it goes up to 99%. Everything you ask for, it's, it's like saying a magic spell, I'm praying for it and it's happening. Well, then I could go, hey, there's evidence to point toward this religion specifically because of intercessory prayer. I don't know if it's true with everything else, but I can definitely show that intercessory prayer is happening. So, what I would do is start praying 
And I'd pray in that way because I would go, okay, here's where the evidence has reliably every single time pointed out. Okay, so let's go with the next God characteristic and go down the list. And if we were to hammer out the omnis, if we were to, um, you know, go and find the tomb of Jesus with some kind of, um, I, I, I'm not an archaeologist. I don't know what it would take as far as that's concerned. But um, hmm. if okay. you were to, I don't know, create a time machine, bring me back, and we both saw Jesus in the Garden of Geth- Gethsef- I always mispronounce the word. Gethsep- <laughs> Gethsemane, me? Gethsemane, I got you. Gethsemane. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, if, if, I, if we were to go there, if we were to see Jesus walking on water, if we were to see, you know, um, uh, Saul on the road to Damascus and actually see scales cover his eyes, um, those things would really have an impact because then you would be providing evidence and proof. But we're nowhere near that. Well, and I, I, can I? I, oh, I would ahead. say, I guess, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. This is your show, go ahead. Oh, sorry. So, so when I think about how old this claim is, uh, I mean, any of these gods, they're old, right? They're, they're thousands of years old, no matter which one you pick. And I think about how how positive I can be that anybody that's alive today is exactly who I'm told that they are. Like, for example, I think about somebody that's well-known. Let's, let's say Donald Trump. You could ask somebody today, is Donald Trump a good guy? And you can find people who will say, yes, absolutely. And you can ask, you know, do you think that Donald Trump's a bad guy? And you will find people who will say, yes, absolutely. So let's go forward 2,000 years and say, how do we know if he's a good guy or a bad guy? And it's like, well, I mean, I, I don't know how you can get to that today necessarily because it just depends on who you ask. Does sure. that make sense? I think- I, I think, yeah, yeah. Um, and this, well, this goes kind of, this was something that I was going to kind of mention um, uh, before you started going, but I, I was going to say, well, going kind of going back to the conv- conviction part because, uh, or convinced part, I'm sorry. Um, Cause well, the example I was going to give for uh, was like, for example, like, uh, you know, I asked about the convincing part because, um, and, and the reason why I asked, why do you, or how do you know that you want to be convinced in the first place is because, um, I was actually going to give flat earth here as an example. Um, you know, we have, we do have all this evidence that, that shows and supports, um, you know, that the earth is not, not round, but spheroid technically is the, is the technically correct term because it's not obviously perfectly round, but, um, oblate spheroid. I, I, I don't think, what's that? Uh, oblate spheroid. Yeah, there, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, I, you can tell I'm not a scientist. So I, I don't know these terms. I, I just know like half of it or whatever. But, um, but I, okay. But like, I, you know, like, I don't, I wouldn't, uh, I honestly wouldn't say that these people are so dense that, you know, that, in, that a rocket trip ship to uh, orbit wouldn't convince them, although that is possible. But, you know, we do have all this overwhelming evidence to support the, the absolute objective, object positive that the Earth is in fact round without a rocket ship and um but people will still defend you know the fact that the earth they think that the earth is flat um and they they seem to i'm not saying you guys are but i'm just saying from my perspective it just kind of seems like they either they're not pretend but they think that they're being open-minded i guess sure but you present them all this evidence but nothing convinces them and like and the point i'm trying to make is that like you know i guess at the end of the day, you know, somebody, somebody out there is correct. It's not the atheist or the theist. And my point, I guess, is just that, you know, um, I don't even like using the word being convinced because that's a personal feeling towards something. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the fact that at the end of the day is what truly matters. You know, like I may not be convinced that you're right. You may not be convinced that, um, that I'm right. But at the end of the day, there, we still agree that there is an objective truth and that our personal feelings don't necessarily interpret or uh, determine what is objectively true. Agreed. Um, so at the end of the uh, day, either a God exists or a God does not exist. It is one of those two. Right. But the reason that I bring up yeah. somebody and, like like somebody that's alive today is because when when somebody tries to convince me that Jesus is not only real, but he's the good guy, and not only is he the good right. guy, but he's a superhero good guy. 
And, you know, it's like when you add on all these different claims on top of somebody that, I mean, I can't even verify the first thing. I can't even verify for absolutely certain that he even was real. You know, he could have been a storybook character. He could have been based on somebody that's real. I don't know. And so it's like, you know. Okay. And so I, but you were saying, um, I'm sorry, we're, we're kind of bouncing back in, in a little bit, but. Sorry. I'm no, sorry. no, no, I'm, I'm yeah. bouncing it, actually. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's on me, not you. Okay. Um, I, I, I kind of want to bounce back just a little bit. You were saying you can give, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can give them all this evidence, but they're going to accept it or not accept it, right? Right. Does bad, is bad evidence convincing? I would say no. Well, if we're talking about, if we're talking about, I mean, if we're talking about God and, and we, you know, if you just entertain the hypothetical from your perspective that, you know, God could exist. I mean, the evidence, and this is something that, uh, I, I'm, are you familiar with uh, an apologi- uh, apologist named Frank Turk? I'm, I'm guessing you know who yeah, he is. Absolutely. He's, okay. Yeah. He, um, he, he, he's kind of mentioned this, you know, he said like, you know, it's, it's the whole good and evil thing, you know, like the bad evidence in this situation would be evil because you know, we, we see that there is evil because we, evil is a, is kind of a metaphorical shadow of good, you know, like the, the sunlight can exist without shadows, but the shadows can't exist without sunlight. So even though it would be technically considered bad evidence, you know, and, and that actually is something that I see a lot of atheists saying, like, you know, if God exists, then why does evil exist? But that is bad evidence, but the bad evidence uh, is still good evidence because no, it reflects. No, it's not. Um, so look up the Raven like, paradox on YouTube. Uh, I saw a, video that actually really really explained that the raven paradox um essentially yeah essentially what you have is uh let's say you want to show that i had oatmeal for breakfast and you go eric is wearing a red shirt that is evidence to support that eric had oatmeal for breakfast and then we went through everything in the room that chair is right there and why know that eric ate oatmeal for breakfast because that chair is right there it doesn't matter how much bad evidence you bring if it's crap evidence the aggregate of crap evidence is still crap evidence. But I gave you so much. Okay. Right? <laughs> l- l- yeah, we can, we can stack it from here to the moon. And if it's crap evidence, it's crap evidence. It actually needs to be relevant. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so okay. if, if you, say, gave me a theological argument for the existence of God, and I walked through it with you, and I showed you, hey, you know what? Here's why there's a fundamental misunderstanding and a breakdown because what you're doing is operating on an assumption. And if you see that, you'd realize that there is zero amount of aggregate that's going to make that evidence more convincing. It's just crap evidence. And so I'm not saying, therefore, you're wrong. I would say, throw out that argument because that one's not convincing. Don't stick it in a pile and hope it gets better because you buried it with others. Mm -hmm. Either it's going to stand or fall on its own merits. And if it falls on its own merits, the aggregate of shit is still shit. <laughs> That's true. Okay. I, I actually, well, let, let me, I, I think I see what you're saying now. I, I'm going to, I would like to kind of retract that. I, I, so sure. I guess I wouldn't necessarily then say that evil is crap evidence. Um, I would actually then, I would, I would retract, retract that last statement and say that actually I do think that, that evil would be considered good evidence. You know, like if, I don't know. Um, hmm. trying, you're assuming say, evil exists. Like and I, well, I, but I mean, I. But well, let's 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 just assume that you gave us a really good argument, even if we granted it, okay. even if we granted it, that argument needs to stand or fall on its own merits. Sure. And so long as we both agree to that, then it's just a matter of whatever it is we're talking about that day. I'm glad that we came to this conclusion. Because there are plenty of people. There's a, there's actually a guy who comes in who's Catholic, who's incredibly sweet, really nice guy, and he comes in every few weeks, and he and I sit down and we talk, and he is absolutely convinced that the monumental amount of Christian apologetics proves without a shadow of a doubt that his religion is true, and so we've gone through and we've talked about so many of them, and I've sat and I've said, why are you still ba- why are you still counting on a bad argument. He goes, well, because when you put it together with all the others, then it's good. No, it's just a mountain of shit now. It's, it's not good. It's just now in a pile of bad. Okay, so what would be, 
Well, because because now we're talking about what's good and bad evidence. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I I haven't heard all. Obviously, I haven't heard all the arguments. I mean, I I'm I'm trying to. Um, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to listen to both sides, uh, but obviously I'm more biased towards the Christian side, so sure. I obviously listen to more. But uh, so, um, I guess my question for what you just said there is uh, trying to get my thoughts here. Um, okay, so we we okay, so you you just mentioned good and evil. We're not sure, but now we're talking about good and bad evidence. Right. Well, how do we know that there is good and bad evidence? Sure. Then? So uh, like, how, how do you how do you justify? Yeah, I guess because we're talking about something definitional. We're actually talking about the meanings that we give to words so that we can parse these things. And so when I talk about good evidence, I'm talking about evidence that discreetly points toward one um, one thing over another, right? One conclusion over another. So. There were fingerprints at the scene of the crime. None of them were mine. That is not evidence that I was there. And it's not evidence that I wasn't there. That's bad evidence in that case that you're trying to say that I was at the crime. If my fingerprints are at the crime scene, that is evidence that I was there. That's good evidence because that is discreetly pointing toward one over the other. It's not, I don't know. It's, hey, here is something pointing towards a specific conclusion. That's good evidence. Eric is wearing a red shirt, therefore he had oatmeal this morning, is bad evidence. And we're saying that because we're trying to determine what is and isn't pointing towards a reasonable conclusion. Now, if he had oatmeal on his shirt... There we go, yeah. Then we might have better evidence. Yeah, and that, that, that would actually... And it wouldn't even be evidence that he had breakfast. It could be evidence that I had breakfast and spilled it on him. Absolutely. But we have better evidence than he has a red shirt on, therefore he had oatmeal. It's better if he has it on him. It's even better if we find, you know, the bowl that he used. And it's even better if we have a video camera that recorded him eating, eating oatmeal, oatmeal and yeah. a date stamped on it. You know, so it's there's levels of <laughs> evidence. There's really bad. There's better. There's best, you know, but so if you have a lot of really good evidence, that's a lot better than a lot of really bad evidence. Actually, I'd go even further and say it's either either it points to it or it doesn't. Right. And so if it points to it, okay. it's, it's, it's technically good evidence. That doesn't mean it's convincing. Right. But if it does not point to it, it will never Dismiss be, it. Yeah. It, 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 you can't get less bad than absolutely irrelevant. Right. And so, yeah, yeah. Does that help? Okay. Um, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, good. Um, so I know that this is kind of like, um, I, I think this is the correct term. And actually, I even got into an argument over this. This is when we're talking about the, uh, you know, the kind of evidence, you know, the, the singular, you know, things that only can only happen once. And you can't suddenly repeat it. That is, that's called forensics. Is, is that correct? Oh, man, I dude. Know, or... Um, but I, I'm, I'm just going to get the right term. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just going to follow you on here because right now I'm not. Um, so are, are you talking about, so forensic, like going through searching for fingerprints, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's forensics. Yeah. Like the, the kind of like, you know, like the murder happened, you know, you can't, you can't repeat and test the murder. Therefore you have to go off of the evidence that exists mm-hmm. to try and prove whether or not someone is innocent or guilty. Right. Um, and then you get Lee Strobel. I, 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 Sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Um, I, I just, well, I, I, I think it's called a singular. I think it's called forensic evidence. Well, I don't know what the technical term is, but whatever that kind of evidence is, mm-hmm. I mean, okay. So, I mean, so we obviously agree that, you know, if, if, you know, Jesus existed, if he is who he claimed to be, um, and, you know, all the things that he, he speak of in the Bible, you know, where, you know, Jesus said that people would perform miracles in my name and all that stuff. Um, uh, wouldn't, so if we were seeing that today, then, Mm-hmm. Um, would that be at least um, a good piece of information for you guys that would um, maybe start causing you or, or maybe not causing you, but having you maybe look at this differently and say, like, oh, maybe there's something here? So I think a, a bit of information to give you, at least about me personally, is I went into this hoping to prove it right. I, can, I, I went into this as a Christian with a bent toward proving it right. So did I. Right. And so I was biased in your direction. Me too. And we got here. So. Okay. 
Well, initially when I called you guys, this is actually one of the things that I did want to ask you about, but you wanted me to be more specific. I actually called and asked, I wanted to actually ask you guys personally what, not, not like your entire life story, but, um, you know, how did you guys get involved in the church? And then in my, well, actually, we kind of did things in reverse order, ironically, because I called wanting to ask you guys that first and then see where things went from there. Yeah. But now it looks like we're actually kind of going backwards. Because um, I did, I did, I don't know anything about your guys' uh, church history or whatever. Um, what, uh, well, maybe so you can call back guys... and we can finish this another time because we've got a couple more callers left. And yeah, um, um, oh, but wow, we'd great. love to continue this conversation. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. And also, yeah. if if you want to know my backstory, I think the most thorough uh, story about my life that I've done uh, was an interview on Neil, the 604 Atheist channel. Um, so you can go there. Uh, we all ended up crying. I shared I shared way more of myself than I had any intention to. But if you want to learn about me, that'll help. And I actually just okay. did my um, deconversion story in a conversation with Matt Dillahunty on his channel. So if you want to look up Atheist Debates... Um, it's on his channel. Mm-hmm. Can you guys quick give me the? I'm gonna. I have my my notes thing here. I just want. I want to take the notes. So uh, Matt, or I'm sorry, Eric. Uh, what, what did you? Where did you say you could find your video? Oh, Neil the six hundred four atheist. Neil six hundred four atheist. And then Jenna, what was yours? Um, it's called a conversation with Jenna Belk, and it's under atheist debates or Matt Del Hunty's channel. So you could look up either one and find it. I'm sure. But okay. I think with that, sure. we're going to head on over to the next call, all right? Thanks for calling. Right, that was a fun talk. Thank you. Take care. Yeah.